from town to town with a horse trailer dragging behind. Just a cowboy lost in a modern world, I feel like I'm losing my mind. Not a day goes by, I don't think about how my life used to be. Now I'm out of my prime and I'm losing time and nobody's calling for me. Call my name, come round up time Now the four-wheelers takes my place And the cowboy life that I've always loved Is getting lost without a trace But I won't give up and I won't give in I'm a cowboy till I die And I know there's got to be a place for me Underneath big western sky Headed out west, gonna do my best to leave the civilized world behind Just me, my saddle, and an honest horse will try to go back in time Where surely there'd be a warm campfire or a bunkhouse calling my name But tonight I'll sleep in my pickup truck cause I'm still not playing their game world may turn, but the thing they can't change is the way I feel inside. A prairie fire may burn itself out, but you can't snuff a cowboy's pride. I'll be what I am, and I'll do what I do. This life is worth fighting for. Yeah, the cowboy life is a life for me, for me and 10,000 more. The cowboy life is a life for Welcome back to True Horse Horsemanship. As I did in a previous video, I've had to voice over this. This is the same little spotted horse. We're getting on the harness. And, you know, thanks to Jim, the owner, he did a lot of prep work that saved me time on my end. He took a lot of ropes like I did in past videos with behind the hocks on the feet and such things as that and uh, which helped this horse get used to the harness and where it hangs so thanks to him and side note Jim's been watching my videos even from the time I was out in California and then we end up moving here to Tennessee and we end up being neighbors which I thought was pretty neat and found out there's a few people here in the area that have been watching my videos. Like I said, my process on this, first I ground drove the horse one day, and she did pretty good, because remember I did all the saddle work, which helps in here too. So my driving alliance is connected, as we say, to the feet. And, uh, and of course, got a stop in the back on her. Now, getting a horse right here, I'm just asking her to take off a little step forward and then we stop. Because there's sometimes when you're working a horse on the harness, that first step off slide will be the scariest. And when we make the turn, they feel the lines on them, on their hocks. And here, you know, she's doing real good, but like I said, Jim's got to take credit for that because he did that, which makes this job easier. Some people like putting weight on it, and first off, I don't like, all I want her to do is pull the skid. Sometimes I'll take a short log and hook them to that, but with this mare, I knew I could go right to the skid, and that's what we did. So we're just, you know, with teamwork, 
and think safety first, safety first, with this horse being on the harness, this is her third day under harness, you know, I don't want her to get in trouble, because if she does, she's liable to not want to pull, so I'm not doing the weight, and the only problem I was having with Jim, you know, he's holding a little bit too tight, he's not keeping her straight. You know, I want to keep this horse straight. It's not like a saddle horse. And that's like, why, like with her when I was riding her, I didn't use my spurs because I didn't want to get her reacting to that kind of pressure since she's going to be in harness. And this is where that one step at a time really counts. And with me and Jim both have a hold of her, we can keep her going straight, and we pretty well keep her under control. And timing, timing is very important here, because a lot of people, if they're trying this, what they do, they react way before, way after the horse reacts, and you don't want that. You want that horse to react. Say so we just take one step at a time. I just turn her. Uh, on my turns, I started out with wider turns, and as we go along, we turn them tighter and tighter. I can't go on enough about safety because there's so many things that can go wrong with getting a horse under harness. So every horse takes a little bit longer. Some horses I might ground drive longer than I did her. But like I said, I already did my saddle work, so that helped out. Some horses I might have them pulling a little bit different things before I go to a skid. And I didn't use a round pin because we'd have to turn so much. Yes, if something happens, it might be easier to get to her. But on the other hand, if something happens, more apt to get hung up in the round pin. So, with luckily enough, you know, I got help with Jim, so I can do it this way. Use a team system. And I want her to stand, learn she can stand there for a good while. And each time I'll ask her to stand longer and longer. Because she's got to learn to stand in harness too, not just to move. Now we're going to switch sides just because I feel more comfortable on the horse's left side because I'm going to start putting a little bit of weight on the skid and what I'll do I'll get her feet moving I'll have Jim get her feet moving and I still got control of her left side because I'm keeping my long line in my hand and I'll just while the horse is moving I'll step on the skid then I'll get off then I'll step on it again let her pull a little bit. And I do this longer and longer each time. Well, I really need just a little bit less weight for it. And I got the ideal person for that. So we'll 
just let them rest again. You know, especially when you first start these horses on a skid, you don't want to do too much. You don't want to ever get them sore because if you get them sore, once again, they're going to want to stop pulling. So I got to, you know, like everything else, it's one step at a time. So here's my ideal situation. Pull little Miss Cindy out from behind the camera, which I don't think she is too keen on, and have her get on it because she weighs a lot less than me and Jim. So it'll be easier for this horse to walk off with her sitting on the skid. Now, right at that time, since Cindy weighs a lot less and she little filly's used to pulling a little bit of weight. I just walked off with Cindy. And at first I don't, I'm not going to give Cindy driving lines because all I want Cindy to do for safety's sake is realize that she has to bail off the skid, she can. So that's the only thing she's got to worry about. She don't have to worry about the driving line. Now here shortly I'm going to hook up my driving lines and at first I just want Cindy to hold them. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to turn her or nothing. And I think that's what we're doing here, getting the lines situated. Fine thing about it while this is going on. At one point, I asked Cindy to stop the mare, and she gave me a funny look like, How am I going to stop the mare? And the reason she did that, I preached to Cindy so much, working with little ones, stop her Mustang, about how to just use her seat. <laughs> and she's thinking, How can she use a seat to stop the horse? <coughs> Excuse me. And then, like I said, I wish the camera took a look on her face when I said that. And I said, just pull on the driving lines. But, you know, that's the way Cindy is. I tell her to do something, she's going to stick in her head. So as we're going off now, Cindy's got the driving lines. And I'll have Cindy start taking control of the horse while me and Jim's up by her head. That way, you know, number one, it's going to keep the horse relaxed because where the horse's crutch, it's going to keep Cindy relaxed because, you know, she knows we're in up there. And as we drive there, like right there, Cindy asked for a woe. And as one time I told her, I said, physically, you know, speak to the horse, say woe. And my I like using voice commands, even when the horse don't know it. Like when I'm, I want them to get up in the collar, I'll say, walk up. And that, you know, eventually that would be their cue to get up in the collar and start pulling. And the most I use walk, walk up and walk. I don't use too much G and Ha. And one thing I also do, and some people driving don't like doing it, but I do, let's say I want to go left, I'll take my right driving rein and I'll tap them with that on the butt for the cue to go left. Because even my driving horses, I want to be out of their mouth as much as I possibly can. I want them to know how to give to the bit, but also I want them to be able to, you know, I don't want to have to pull on them. I know I had a little paint horse in California that I was on, pulling on a doctor's buggy, buggy, and somebody saw me, you know, cantering around the arena and everything, loping. And she asked me, she said, how do you turn that horse? I said, just my finger, I just touch that mouth and he follows that direction. 
and that's the way I want it. I don't want to have to pull hard. I want just a slight touch and may go with that feel. Doesn't matter if you're under saddle or in the harness. But you gotta think about it, it's gotta be more pleasurable for them to do it that way than somebody pulling on them. You know, I haven't started a harness horse for a long time and I'm enjoying it. Something different. Now here I'm Perth took my my line off and just let Jim be up there. Like I said, Jim and me we're just a safety net if something happens. Because this is only this little Philly's second time on the skid. And just like everything else, we do stop and rest, stop and rest. Because I can't say it's just important, especially with harness. They learn they got to stand there and be relaxed and not be fidgety. And plus, give the horse a breather. The horse is doing good, so just let him, let her catch a breath. And then, right there, Cindy told the horse to walk up. And off we went. And now we're making a little bit tighter turns with Cindy back in on the skid. So it's Philly. Like I said, being the second time on a skid and pulling, everything she's doing pretty good. I'm quite pleased with her. You know, the three P's here, patience, persistence, person. Persistence is just important as under saddle. So here I'm taking over driving lines for a little bit. Once again, he, Jim wants to pull the horse over too much. And like I said earlier, it's important to keep the horse straight. Now your ground person, especially like right here, I want Jim in front of that horse a little bit so the horse sees him. You gotta remember the horse got blinders and if you're beside the horse, the horse can't see you. So now here I'm basically Jim's just there, I'm driving her. And the first time on a skid, I'm not worried about going both ways. I'll just concentrate on going to the left. And hook her up to the skid again, and then we go right and left. As I've noticed through the years, if I get this horse comfortable, turn to the right, going to the left is not going to be that big of a deal. They might get a little bit worked up, but it's a lot easier to catch it on quick. You know, right there, Jim's got hold of it too much so he's just got to relax let me take over but it's Jim's first time working with a harness horse too so I said I just want him there for if things fall apart there if you look you can tell I didn't really pull on that horse much to stop it and that time like I say with my weight she walked off pretty relaxed you 
you know, a lot of times, <clears throat> I got another horse here I'm thinking about getting on the harness because he has issues. And in the past, I've had horses that had a little bit of issues. And I'll put them in the harness for a while. And when I go back to saddle work, they just, I got a different horse. Number one, they get to, used to working. And they just, there's something about putting a horse in harness that helps fix a few issues. Now I gotta admit, you know, I said earlier about not working the horse too long. This session went so well, it was hard for me to just stop. But it's, you know, when you're working about with horses, it's not all about you. It's about the horse. And like I said before, if I can make it my training sessions short and everything goes well and not get the horse sore with the harness and all and we just increase our time working with them because more and more the horse gets in shape you know it's going to be easier for them to pull you and the skid Now here, when I go to unhook the horse, Jim wants to sort of keep the horse, but I want a teacher not to really depend on Jim. So I grabbed the line from Jim, I unhook her myself. All right now, I'm going to move her hip over a little bit. So, you know, that was a pretty nice move. Considering, like I said, this is the only second time this horse being on a skid. Now, I don't hook the chains right up to the single tree, not the first few times. I got a little trick for safety sake because, you know, if something happens and that single tree breaks off from the skid, you know, you'll have it single tree bouncing all over behind a horse and that will really spook him. So here in a minute we'll do a close up and I'll show you what I do. And while we're waiting for my old butt to get over to the camera and, and Jim come over here, you know people and Cindy brought this up about training with blinders and no blinders. I've asked old timers about that and some would say they start off without binders and some say they always use binders and one day I was training a Mustang for a fellow who provides the horses and mules, teams and six up for the movies and I asked him that question and he just looks at me and said well common sense tells me now right there I got, I used baling twine on the end of my chains and tie that to hook it up to a single tree. So hopefully baling twine breaks. But back to what I was saying about the blinders. Uh, the fella said, you know, the horse is going to be in blinders when you take them on the road or wherever. 
So why even put your self or the horse through it? Just start with binders and keep them on. And I like his way of thinking. And like I said, this is a guy who has furnished horses and mules for all the major movies, even Lonesome Dove. And mules was his. So was Gray Horse that was in there. So, I hope you enjoy this. Sorry for the voice over. But, you know, I want to get these videos out here. Uh, one on her saddle with her for the first ride. And, and this one. You know, everybody thinks it's easy, easy to make a video. You just put the camera up and start recording. Well, you got to have a sound system. you got to make sure everything is charged up. And with technology, you might think something's charged up, and all of a sudden, you don't have a charge. And, you know, my sound's a lot better than it was way 13 years ago when I started this out. And it's important to have these videos where you can hear me. So I got new sound system ordered and it's coming. And also I think I'm going to start the round table back up. Of course now they call podcasts. But you know I was ahead of my time. I do have a podcast on speaker.com and I think I Apple and another one but not getting hit, so I think I'm going to go back and use YouTube and film with my podcasts. So I hope you get something out of this. As I always say, be true to horse. They'll be true to you. First and foremost, be true to yourself. God bless and take care.